Harmony Baptist Children's Corner. My name is Dave. Uh, this is COVID Home Edition 26. Six, 26. All right. Uh, first of all, Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you and your family have a great time, have a wonderful meal, and that uh, you have lots of joy and peace. Uh, so ha Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. All right. Uh, today I want to talk. Oh, okay. Let's suppose, let's suppose, let's suppose you're in the army, all right? And your guys are in the enemy territory, all right? And now it's nighttime and you're tired and you want to go to sleep. So um, what do you do? You just, you know, camp out? Okay, well, here's a good spot. I don't think anybody's serious and you camp and that's it. No, what do you do? You set up a sentry, right? Like a guard. You say, okay, you stay awake. You do the guard. You, you, that, that's what you do, all right? You stay awake and if somebody comes, let us know. And we'll, you know, that's called a sentry, the guard. And that's what his job was, to, to, to do that. Now... Calling it a job, that's the thing, you know, like, when I, when I think about jobs, you know, some people call in sick to their job, and some people aren't very good at their job, and some people take vacations from their job, and some people take a long lunch on their job, so it's it's not really even more, it, it's more than a job for that guy, that guard, that sentry, um, because he's got to protect his buddies and, and, and um, keep them safe, you know, so calling it a job is not, I think it's more like a duty, it's more like it, it's his duty, it's their duty. To stay awake and to, and to be that thing. So I like the word duty on that, okay? Like a little more than a job, it's like, what's his duty? Now, there's a story, um, same again in the army, of, the guy, of a guy who, who wants to be in the army. He's always wanted to be in the army. So he joins, he joins the army and goes through basic training and he's really good. Really good at basic training. And they say to him, hey, you should be a specialist with training. So they say, okay, so they train him on this and they train him on that and they train him on this and he's really good at all this stuff. So they, they send him off to join his buddies, at, you know, so he goes to go. And, and the first time, the very first time he's out and he's with his buddies, like there's some new guys, some old guys, and, and he's got the big weapon, he's the specialist, you know. So they're walking down, down the, the road and sure enough, a couple of abandoned buildings, you know, shot out kind of, and they're walking past it and they get and they're getting shot at. So they jump into the ditch, and they're all laying there in the ditch. And this guy, you know, he almost, almost beat himself. That's how scared he was. And they're all laying there, and, and he's like, what? And, and they turn to him, and it's like his, his sergeant says, well, that's you. You're on. You're the specialist. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I got the big gun. So he's got, like, the grenade launcher. So he up and turns and lets a couple go. Boom, boom, blows the building to bits. But even though he knew it was his duty, he forgot. He got scared, and that happens. Things happen. You, 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 you forget what your duty was. But when somebody reminds you, he was right on. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm up. And he got up. And they're shooting, but he knew that was his duty. He was supposed to take what was coming at him, and that was his duty to do to do that. So duty comes in different forms. Um, you guys know I'm a leader at Camp Oneida, or I'm a program director with Donna. Donna and I do the program director. But once upon a time, we started as leaders, and, and I, like in a cabin, and I was a leader of a cabin. And I remember one of my first years, um, one of these, one of the kids came was Tim, uh, Tim Peters. And uh, Tim, he's blind. And, you know, ooh, how's this going to work out? But it worked out great. Like, not a problem. Tim's really, he'd been blind since birth. He takes care of himself very, very well. And, and I didn't really, you know, Tim, everybody, and everybody took care of Tim. Tim, everybody, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I remember one night, um, it was like a couple nights in, maybe even the first night, and, and it's about midnight, and he goes, Dave? I'm like, yeah, yeah, Tim, what's up? And he's, I have to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> and I'm like... What do, you, what do you need from me, bud? You know, how, how can I help? Uh, do you need me to turn the light on? I actually asked the blind person if he needed me to turn the light on. But um, he said, no, no, no. Just if you could lead me to the bathroom, I can find my way back. So that, you know, that was, and that worked out. But this thing with Tim, uh, Tim and I became good friends. For years, he came to camp, and he, you know, he's a leader now. And a good guy, really good guy. One year when I was a director, I'm sure, he was the, and he was a camper, we were playing Manhunt. And um, Manhunt is a game where um, one person's it, and everyone else hides or runs away or whatever, and I have to touch them. And whoever I touch helps me manhunt everyone else. And eventually, the idea is you got everybody looking for one or two people, and then if you get a good hiding spot, it's a fun game, you know. We play in the forest behind the camp, and it's a good forest, you know. There's like there's a swamp, and there's a creek with logs over the creek, and there, you know, a bog. It's it's a good forest, a good. So it's great for playing manhunt. So we take Tim. Tim want to play Manhunt because Tim always plays. We all, you know, Tim. He he does everything. You know, he plays British Bulldog with us. Ran swat, something smart. Ran smack in the side of a building, cabin five. But anyways, he wants to play Manhunt. Okay, Tim. So I'm the director. So I'm it. So they go. They go hide in the forest. And okay, I'm coming. And I walk into the forest. 
And there's Tim, like just standing. I think he thought he was beside a tree, but he's just standing and he hears me, so he's absolutely still. <laughs> and he's got his red and white cane, and he's like, I see you, Tim, got you, you know, you're you're caught, okay, bud. So now you have to help find everyone else, you know, and he's okay, you know, and I said, So do you want Tim, do you want me to just take you back and you can, you know, just sit it out and he's like, No, no, I know and he, Tim wants to play. I'm like, All right. So I left him and I well, did I tell you that it was a forest with creeks and logs over the creeks and bogs and a swamp? Okay, so about 45 minutes later, we're still playing, and um, my son Luke is walking by with a buddy, and they're talking, and they hear son Tim go, Luke, Lucas, is that you, Luke? <laughs> Luke goes, and there's Tim in the swamp, up to here, up to his thighs in the bog with, with his oldest cane, but he's playing, and it's like, Luke, can you? <laughs> now, should I have taken him in? Even though he said I want to play. Was it my duty to take care of Tim? Yeah. I knew, I knew this is not a good thing for a blind person to be there. Regardless of how much he wants to play, regardless of how good he is, I've seen him run into a cabin. So I knew this was probably not, so I should not have left him. It was my duty to take care of him. Even though it's not like a duty thing, not like it was my duty to take care of the guys as a sentry, as a guard, or my duty with the big gun, you know, but... But it was still my duty to take care of Kim. Now, Tim, now, Peter, in the Bible, Peter says something about duty, too. He says, as Jesus' followers, it's kind of our duty. See, the thing is, we try, we try to be like Jesus. As Jesus' followers, we try to be like Jesus. Now, we tell other people, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be like Jesus, and, and then we tell other people Jesus was perfect. So what we're saying is we're trying to be perfect. Which is what I told you two weeks ago, so see, I, I was right. We are trying to be perfect. We also know we're never going to be. But other people who aren't Jesus followers, they look at us and say, oh, you think you're perfect. So no, no, no. We don't think we're perfect. We know we're not, so we're trying to be. But they, oh, you think you're perfect, and so they watch us. You know, and it's just like I tell the, 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 the leaders of my leaders at camp, I say, the kids watch you 24-7. They watch you all the time. And the people, the, the non-Jesus followers, they watch the Jesus followers. And they wait till you do something non-perfect. And then they say, oh, see, yeah, that's what Jesus followers do. That's what Christians do. You know, so Peter said, it's your duty as a Jesus follower to do the right thing. To be perfect, to be holy, to stop doing bad things. We talked about that last week. Stop doing bad things. In fact, he said, it's so important. He says, you got to make sure that you follow all the laws. You follow the government. You follow the police. You do all those right things so people can't look at you and say, aha, see? Aha, see, that's what Jesus followed. That's what Christians do. So they can't do that to us. It's our duty as a Jesus follower, to do that, to do the right thing, to follow the laws and statutes, to, to do what the government says. Even though we don't always agree, God has them there. There's a reason those people are there. God has a th something's going on. I don't know his big plan, so I'm just going to go along with what he says. You know, And if I want to do something about it, do something about it. But it's your duty to do what you're supposed to do. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have, enjoy your turkey, whether it's today, yesterday, tomorrow. Uh, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.